Live Nation, the world's largest live entertainment company, just posted its 2023 figures with total revenue of $22.7 billion, with multiple heavy hitters like Metallica and Taylor Swift playing stadiums again after the disrupted pandemic years. The touring industry seems to be back in good health. 81.3 million people in North America attended a Live Nation concert and 64.5 million attended internationally. The company staged 33,629 concerts in North America and 16,430 internationally. Live Nation President CEO Michael Rapino said, Our digital world empowers artists to develop global followings while inspiring fans to crave in-person experiences more than ever. In the UK, a June 2023 report by Price Waterhouse Coopers predicted continued growth across the entire live music sector. On the surface, these figures paint a rosy picture, one of audiences hungry for experience with plenty of popular performers stepping up with record-breaking stadium shows. But the reality on the ground is that grassroots venues, a vital part of the musical ecosystem, are under serious threat from a multitude of factors like rising operating costs, the legacy of multiple lockdowns, rent increases and noise complaints from property developers. The Music Venue Trust, a UK-based charity, found that 125 of these spaces closed or stopped hosting live music in the past year. A survey of the remaining 835 members of the Music Venue Alliance, the MVA, showed the venues staged more than 100 in 87,000 events in 2023, with close to 1.7 million individual artist performances across the board. But despite making over £500 million in revenue, the venues themselves only made £2.5 million, so 0.5% profit, during the year. We all know that an intimate club show can knock a soulless stadium out of the park for vibe, intensity and connection between the crowd and artist. It's where many of us learn to perform, to hold a crowd, to build our audience. Very few performers can go straight into stadium shows. You need time to develop. I very fondly remember seeing Katy Perry perform at the 800 capacity London venue Scala back in 2008. It's one of the highlights of my gig-going life. And just remember, you don't get to be mega stars like Katy Perry, Metallica or Taylor Swift without having the musical playground that a small venue can be for artists starting out. But we risk these precious venues closing for good without our support. I'm touring eight small venues in the UK this autumn, and it's not a given that they'll all still be operating when my night comes around. In fact, in the last few days, London's Bush Hall, where I'm scheduled to play, has launched an urgent appeal for donations to their crowdfunding campaign to help them stay afloat. I have donated, and if you have anything you can spare, I will post the link in the description below. It's 74% funded at the time of filming this video. Crowdfunders are becoming a familiar sight and provide some temporary relief, but they're not a long-term solution to the problem. And I sent out an early version of my thoughts as part of my 21st Century Musician newsletter and received one email response which I do think is worthy of discussion. So this person wrote to me, you are operating your limited business responsibly, maximizing profits and minimizing debt. Small venues must also function in a way that enables them to continue as a going concern, not borrowing sums that put huge pressure on their ability to pay back with continuous oversight of their cash flow, no surprises, and if projections forecast an unsustainable venue, then take action before forcing creditors to take a loss. A levy on profitable companies is merely an excuse for incompetent management of smaller venues to be continued. Harsh for all individuals who suffer, but you are not expecting any handouts for Mary Spender Limited if you fail to govern it correctly. And some of this is all valid. However, just adding a personal note, I do rely on a very traditional way of supporting the arts, which you could call a handout, which is patronage to help keep this YouTube channel running and keep being able to fund my musical projects, just like my most recent album. Venues are businesses and businesses come and go as part of life and need to be responsibly run, but not all businesses are created equal. 
whatever your politics, you have to recognise that this crisis is not just the result of live venues being incompetently managed. On the contrary, many do extraordinary things on a shoestring budget. The arts not only bring social benefits, but they can drive wider economic growth too. They're facing enormous and unprecedented pressures as a result of global events, the aftermath of the pandemic, which eliminated any cash reserves, the huge rise in energy prices with electricity bills increasing by 600% in some cases, as well as an average 37.5% rent hike from landlords. One possible solution is to impose a small ticket levy on large-scale shows put on by companies like Live Nation to help support the grassroots, because otherwise, in maybe 20 years' time, they won't have any artists to put on. Well, other than the worrying AI pop stars we've started to see crop up. The indie ticketing company Skiddle has just voluntarily introduced this measure with a 50p, the equivalent of 60 cents levy, going straight to the MVT pipeline investment fund. Skiddle will also match all funds raised through the levy. It's hoped that this will inspire other companies to follow suit. So far, the UK government has shown little appetite for this as a solution, nor do they seem to recognise the enormous cultural value these institutions bring. Birmingham, the UK's second largest city and home to some of the finest arts companies and businesses, announced a planned 100% cut to its arts budget as it struggles to make 300 million in savings. It's, it's just cultural vandalism. Art is often the first thing on the chopping block when budgets are cut, but it brings enormous value, not just to our lives, but our wider economy too. A night out at a gig means money for a taxi driver, a bar and restaurant owner, and a babysitter. That means economic growth. They also foster a sense of pride in our community. These are the events that make life worth living. They are a brief moment of escapism for the underpaid and overworked. If everything else was functioning well and money was actually going to all the right places, then we'd be having a different conversation. But anyway, I can only personally do so much. And as I'm a musician who's worked on their craft in such venues, I can only ask you to consider how you can help your local venue. Maybe go and see that local artist you've heard about or do some research about what's on. Worst case scenario, you get out of the house and away from this screen. Also, you might find some amazing friends. So buy tickets directly, donate if you can, check out the work from the Music Venue Trust and write to your local representative asking them to do more in support of the grassroots. They need our help more than ever. But as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>